Whoa, <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> did God reach that? Never mind. I'm not going over there. <laughs> you didn't see what happened, did you? Good. For those of you with children, uh, let them scream. Let them enjoy themselves. I, I think what uh, uh, Rick, you said a, a few Sundays back, isn't it wonderful to hear the kids? And, and that means we have great life and, and uh, well, all the good things. And I hope you parents don't go through what I went through. Uh, Heath, our son, was about three or four, and he was just being a little pill. And so I decided to take him outside and have a little religious talk with him. Uh, <clears throat> I won't go any further than that. And I got about the middle of the class, and he screams out, Dad, don't beat me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that didn't go very well. But anyway, just want to welcome... Let me get this turned on. Yeah. I did not know it would do that with the thing. Let me go do this. Oh, boy. You know, the Bible is so much easier to use. Let me just get back to home. Okay. That's better. I want to welcome you if you're a visitor. I want to warn you about this congregation. It's the friendliest congregation I've ever been in. And I am 81 years old, but I'm not going to be Moses. <laughs> Can you imagine? Well, I wouldn't go there. But uh, we, uh, it's just a wonderful congregation. And we love the, the group of folks here. And we have quite a few that are not here today. Some are in uh, the, what do you call the blooms? Okay. Blooms Day. And uh, I would be there if I hadn't fallen off of a roof a few years back. And just anyway, it's a great time. And, uh, but we're just so glad that those of you that are here are here. And let me make sure this is the right button. All right. I do want to talk about what is a true friend. It's just amazing, Andrew, the uh, songs you, the last one you talked about was Angry Words. Now, I'm not going to ask any of you if you've had an angry word because we'd all have our hand up. I'd have both of them up. And there are a lot of words that I wished I had listened to before they came out of my mouth, but we're gonna be trying uh, to just talk in a kind way about words. I, uh, I like how Andrew starts his sermons, though. I think he said his dad did that. And I, I, I picked out a, you know, most of the words are the little girls says this, or the little girl that said that. Well, this is the little boy said this in Sunday school class. And the teacher, his name, of course, was Johnny. And the teacher said, do any of you know about Solomon? And Johnny's hand went up. And the teacher said, well, Johnny, what do you know about Solomon? And she said, he said, yes, ma'am. Would you believe he had 300 wives and he had 700 porcupines? <laughs> oh. <laughs> For those, I hope you know those were column, column, what were they called? Concubines, right. Anyway, I'm sorry, Andrew, my joke didn't come over as good as you but I tried. <laughs> what is a true friend? You know, we could spend all day probably just discussing what is a true friend. And I know all of you have had true friends. I married mine, and she's put up with me for, what, babe, 10 years? Oh, 59. Oh, okay. And I'll tell you, for those of you that are looking at marriage or just getting married, you, you do have valleys, but the rooftops are, are wonderful. But a true friend, I, one of the experts says that a fruit trend, the first person who comes when the rest of the world has gone out. I want you to think about that. And as you live, you will find out this is as good as it gets. I can't elaborate on that one. I've learned to value and cherish my friends. And all of you are my friends. A friend is one who, for you, finds time on the calendar. Now, I don't know if all of you are that busy, but a lot of us get so busy that uh, we kind of have to have a calendar. When you get my age, you have to have a calendar, a calendar, or you forget, you know, what's going on, and then I le lose my uh, list. So I, anyway, I won't even go there anymore. Or it's a friend who, for you, does not even consult his or her calendar. They're right there, and they're ready to help you in any way they can. I had one of my friends call me the other day. We had a couple coming to 
well, it was Tanner and Alyssa, uh, Allie, we're coming to, Allie and Tanner, we're coming to uh, visit with us that night, but his tractor, he gotten it off of a trailer. He said, Keith, come help. And what do you say? Well, I've got a guest coming. I said that, not really to him, and Sue looked at me and I knew what that meant. So I went to help him. And anyway, always be ready to help. And that was pretty, is this not working? There it went. So we really want to talk about true Christian fellowship right now. What is a good friend? The angry words kind of talked about some of the negative side of of true friendship and I'll be visiting with that and this this sermon was really hard for me to work up I soon will know that I even got up at about four this morning and tried to polish it up and and finally I said God I know you can help and Scott you know what I mean and it went and if this doesn't work I'm gonna get mad okay true Christian fellowship is when found is a blessing and should be cherished. And I know all of you cherish your good friends. I do. It's genuine. It's care and concern. My, our daughter-in-law is, uh, I don't think I've met anyone. Uh, well, I have, all, a lot of you in here, but she's so caring. If, you're, if she thinks you're sick, you know, uh, it's just good to be around her. She's concerned. You can tell I'm not used to using this thing. I apologize, guys. I'm throwing the button away. And we'll get started. I'm just going to go to the beginning and start again. And I'll hit the enter, enter button. Now I know why Joe hits the enter button. Okay, let's go from there. Uh, and it's not fake. It's not fraudulent. And it's not a betrayal type of friendship. I'm sure all of you, if you haven't, you will someday have a friend betray you. And uh, it's even worse when you're in love with them, you know. And I'm not talking about you, honey. I'm just talking about in the past, you know. Uh, all of you know what I'm talking about. But what is genuine friendship? A false friend is like your shadow. As long as there is sunshine, he sticks close by, but the minute you step into the shade, he disappears. Now, I know this is in the masculine sense, and it means, or she could be the one that disappears. Friendship is not based on one's prosperity. Have you ever known anyone, especially in high school and college, and well, we still have that to happen today, that have friends who have money and they buy their friends. And uh, I, we could probably talk all day about how lo long some of your friends use money in a, in a false way. False friendship. Proverbs 19, 4, 6, and 7 basically say, wealth makes many friends, but the poor is separated from his friend. Many entreats a favor of the nobility, and every man is a friend to one who gives gifts. All the brothers of the poor hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He may pursue them with words, yet they abandon him. A lot of wisdom in all of this. It's not, maybe it's not as we would totally say it today in our vernacular, but we get the point. False friendship is parasitic. What is parasitic? Well, anyone know what a tick is? Oh yeah, a flea, they're very, or a mosquito, yeah, uh, are, they are parasites, and they can cause all kind of problems. Uh, a false friend ignores or your inner characteristics. I think we all know what that is. They are consumed with external qualities. They seek to befriend wealth. You know, if you're wealthy, they're your friend. They seek to befriend power. If you're a powerful person, they want to be on your side. And their popularity, uh, you know, teaching for 40 years, I think one of the biggest fights I ever saw were between uh, girls. It was just incredible how they would fight for popularity. In fact, the worst fight I ever saw was in the old school cafeteria. And uh, I heard a bang and I looked up and one girl 
had hit the other girl over the head with a lunch tray. I couldn't believe it. And by the time I, we got over there, the coach was asking us to help. One girl had ripped the other girl's pierced ear out, earring. And then it got nasty. The other girl bit the other girl's cheek out off with her, and, and it was terrible. And I would like to say they were fighting over me, but they weren't. <laughs> but they were fighting over a boy, but boy, girls fight dirty. So anyway, I don't know if that's true now. This was 1958, so some of you weren't even a gleam in your dad's eye then. But when wealth, power, the gift is gone or not useful, what happens to the friendship? It dies. Tim, you probably remember in high school, those that had the hot car were the really good ones. You know, I had a 50, no, it was a 48 Ford pickup. I was it. It would do 70 miles an hour downhill with an 80 mile an hour wind. But anyway, I had a pickup and I loved it. And, and I'm, some of this, I hope you know there's seasoning that goes with it. Have you thought about Job and what happened with him? You know, he said, my relatives have failed and my close friends have forgotten me. Those who dwell in my house and my maid servants count me as a stranger. I'm an alien in their sight. I call my servant, but he gives me no answer. I beg him with my mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife. I kind of wondered what that meant, but he figured that one out on your own. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, uh, and I am repulsive to the children of my own body. Even young children despise me. I rise and they speak against me. All my close friends abhor me, and those whom I love have turned against me. My bone clings to my skin and to my flesh, and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have you ever heard that, the skin of my teeth? I used to hear that, I never really realized. Would some of you like the air conditioner on? Or raise a hand. Anyone want an air conditioner on? Do you know how to turn them on, Tim? Just one, anyway. Thank you, sir. I came up with three C's of true friendship. And uh, really, few friendships sell on these three things. And I'm sure we can come up with a lot more. But one thing I've kind of discovered from looking into this is true friendship is constant. It's enduring, it's loyal, and it's understanding. I think that's probably the, the one thing that, that we all struggle with. Do our friends really understand us? Psalms 15.3 says, He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friends. And we could talk about that probably all day. Uh, we've all done it. We're all probably ashamed when we do something like that. And hopefully as we get closer to God, uh, we can be more gentle in this area. Proverbs 7:17 says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for an adversity. Have you ever thought your brother is there to help you through what? Pain, agony, and all of those things. I like Elisha's story, and then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Now that's friendship could almost make a bumper sticker out of that one. And Ruth, I know all of you have heard this, but I love what Ruth said. She said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more so also, if anything, but death parts you from me and me. I can't comment on that. It just says its things. 
Proverbs 27.10, do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend. I've never really heard or remember about your father's friends, but I know my dad had wonderful friends. He was a principal and some of them, uh, he probably spanked when they were young. <laughs> won't go there. Confidentiality, it's kind of a big word but some things simply need to remain confidential. You know, there's some things we can tell our friends and you know it'll stay there with them. And you know, I think that's one of the biggest problems sometimes we have as Christians is when we try to talk to somebody about a problem we have, we make ourselves real vulnerable. And uh, uh, in, this, in this group of brothers and sisters here, if I wanted you to have confidence, I know it would stay there. This is something that can really cause problems. A friend doesn't rush news that was privately confided to him and to the press. And I think we all know what that means. Gossip and backbiters are not good friends. That pretty much says everything that I can say. Proverbs 16:28 says, a perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer separates the best of friends. I, I just saw this so much in my teaching career, where you could see <laughs> one person looking at the other person and whispering. And you know, you could, they may not have been saying anything, but a lot of times today, it's not only the whispering, it's the look they give each other. And uh, it says all things. Proverbs 17, 9. He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a manner separates friends. You know, we're here to help each other. And if we transgress against something, I hope you folks will come to me and say, Keith, think over what you did. And, you know, a lots of friendships seek not to see, but friends don't judge friends. What does that look like? Friends don't judge friends. We could speak about that a lot. Sue was a counselor for quite a few years, and Scott works with that. And, and some of your grandparents and some of your parents and and we all have to be very careful with judge you i'm the worst i find out that i i tend to judge some situations just because i was a teacher i was in law enforcement and sometimes judging something is very important uh, i have to give you a case and see how you would handle it. Sue and I just graduated from college and we went to the Navajo reservation to teach. And we were in a little place called Mariano Lake. And uh, we started worshiping in Gallup, New Mexico. They had a really nice church there. One of the elders asked me if I would teach the, the high school and junior high class. I said, sure. And uh, First day in class, there were about 20 kids in there. And I'm, I don't even remember what the lesson was in back, but I had a young man sitting about where Ivan is back there. And he, I, I couldn't help but notice he pulled out a knife, well, about this long. And I couldn't believe it. And he was a big kid. He was probably 6'1 and weighed close to 200 pounds. And he was poking the preacher's daughter who was I don't know, she's about a sophomore in high school. He was poking her in the rear end. So as a teacher, well, how do you judge that? Well, I, I just said, Mike, put up the knife. And I thought that was enough. And he said, make me. I see one little hat up going up back there. <laughs> And she volunteered to tell me what to do. <laughs> that was so cute. Anyway, and I didn't know what to do. Now, if I'd been, you know, like some of you guys in here, you know how to, you know, you 
Well, anyway, I just said, Mike, uh, one of us is going to get hurt. But I would need for you to, and he said, well, just why don't you make me? And I said, well, the best thing for me to do is to go get your dad. Guess what he said? Go get him. Now, how do you deal with a kid like that? There's a lot of judging and everything else. And so I went and got dad. And I didn't know his dad was an elder really at the time. And so the dad, the dad got him outside. And you know, the kid ended up in, in the penitentiary. He did some really bad stuff. But you know what he got out? He became a, a decent kid. But you have to be careful how you judge people. Uh, we saw a movie last night, and I thought this guy does not have the brain of a gnat. And he ended up being one of the best kids you could ever meet. And I know in your, those of you that work out in the gym, or, or maybe you have somebody working for you, when you first see them, you think, well, you know. But they ended up being wonderful people. That's what I love uh, about this giving the, the treats to the, I don't guess you call it, it's not trees, what is it, our sacks to the, the, the bags. And I love that program, uh, Joe Lissa. I'm Joe Lissa. You know, you know who I'm talking about, Lisa and Joe. But it's such a great program, and you meet so many people. Anyway, but true friendship can handle constructive criticism. Boy, this is where a lot of times I think we in church kind of get into trouble. There, there are some criticisms that can be done with love, but there's some criticisms can be done with, you know, uh, uh, I won't get into all of that. We moved to Gunnison, though, in 1966, and the congregation there was very small, and they asked me to lead singing. Well, you know, uh, as I was leading singing, I, to I chose to just sing the first two verses. I had a member jump on me after <laughs> services that I, I'm not even going to tell you. I didn't know Christians said those things. Uh, but they got after me. And, and right now, I would have said, well, that's a nice opinion you had. But with this particular Christian, it was law. And you, I guess you know that I led a song then during communion. The church I had gone to, they would lead songs during communion. Boy, did I get in trouble for that. And so I'm just saying, we in the Church of Christ, we follow the book, but we also have some traditions that we try to follow. Be careful when you start jumping on young Christians, because I was about ready to just say, forget it, I'm going to go to the the Baptist Church or something. So let's just be careful with how we have constructive criticism. Yes, I could have used positive criticism. You know the song, I Know the Lord Will Find a Way for Me? We had Mrs. Fr I love it, amen. We, Fernsell Sovereign, uh, she, how old was she, 96? But she was one of, her dad was friends of Captain Gunnison. This is in Gunnison, Colorado. Captain Gunnison came in and was friends with the Indians. Well, she and her sisters homesteaded out in the Gunnison area, girls by themselves on 100 acres every night. You Indians were everywhere. And so she was, she was still coming to church. She had a 51 Ford. Uh, and when she came in, she used the Braille system. I mean, you know, boom, she hit another car, boom, she would back it up. And so we fixed a special parking place for her. And uh, when I led that song, she loved it. She said, oh, Keith, I love that song. Would you lead it the next time? Well, the next time, <laughs> come on. Tim, this is why you don't use PowerPoint. That's why. <laughs> okay. In the top corner. By the X. Do what here? Hit the square right there. Okay. That'll get you there. Yes, that's. Well, anyway. I had someone jump all over me after classes for singing that song. 
it was not the right song. And so, you know, here I am trying to lead a song for a 96-year-old lady, and here's someone else jumping all over me because the song had See the Light or something in it. And, you know, it, it's really frustrating if you're trying to help. Us guys get up here, and I know we make mistakes, but when you help us, be sure that you give love. I think one of the worst things and problems we had in George West's elders were the emails that were going on. You know, the emails were just a real problem. And uh, be careful if you're going to email something. You know, teaching, I learned real quickly, is I may see an, uh, send an email to Bark back there and say, Bark, how's everything going? And it'll be okay. But when you're trying to help someone, talk to them face to face. You know, uh, I've learned one thing is, uh, Patrick, I can tell you this, because Patrick and I were prayer partners, but I could not email Patrick, and he understand what I was saying. So if I really wanted to get really close with somebody and tell them, hey, this isn't right, don't email them, talk to them. And so I had other things here, but I think I've said enough. <laughs> I just, uh, let me see if I can get this other one for conclusion. The other stuff I was going to say was taste your, taste your words before they come out. I do not know what has happened to this thing, but you know, if, uh, Well, I was going to show you the tail of nails. And the, probably the only way I can get to this is to restart it. And it uh, should go with, let me try this one down here. Well, it's not going to work. It's a story about a young man, though, that had a real uh, temper problem. And so his granddad gave him a pocket full of nails. And he said, every time you get to a point that you think you're going to lose it, get a nail and go over to this fence and drive a nail. And it was really neat. The kid started driving fewer and fewer nails. And finally he ended up and he told his granddad, he said, Granddad, I, I think I'm, I'm through losing my temper. And so the grand said, okay, here's your assignment. And he gave him a, na a nail pouch. And he said, now, every time that you think you're still kind of losing it, Get a hammer and pull a nail out. And so you know how that went. It went a lot slower. And finally, the kid finished all the nails. And he said, Granddad, I finished all the nails. Can you buy me that ice cream and or whatever it was you promised me? And the granddad said, sure. But come over here. I want you to look at something. And he said, do you notice anything about this fence? The little boy said, yeah, there's holes in it. And he said, that's what you do to people's hearts when you say things or do things you shouldn't. You may be forgiven, they may be forgiven, but it leaves holes. So my, my comment right now is let's all be careful and not leave holes in people's hearts, okay? I know that uh, we have the invitation now, and if any of you wish to be baptized, we have those services. If you need to ask for forgiveness of sin, we have those. If you need prayer, that's what those little cards are. We'll be glad to pray with you. And we're just so glad all of you are here. And so let's stand. And is Andrew around? Oh, I thought I lost you. Okay. Andrew, let's all stand and we'll sing the invitation song. Thanks, Jim.